My name is Paul. I'm a solution architect here at Red Hat. Today, I'd like to discuss CPU overcommitment in OpenShift virtualization. Let's take a look. When teams are tasked with moving workloads to hyperscalers, one of the first things they do is look at their inventory of virtual machines and do a one-to-one -one mapping of resources. And those resources are vCPU and memory, generally speaking, and storage. One thing they often overlook is that they've gotten used to using overcommitment of those resources on their virtualization platforms. When they take their workloads to a hyperscaler and say, I need 12 virtual CPUs for this virtual machine, the hyperscaler is going to charge you for every one of those virtual CPUs, whether they're actively in use or not. When that virtual machine was running on their own private virtualization platform, they were able to take advantage of that overcommitment. So they were able to put a lot more virtual machines on the limited resources they had, and they weren't paying extra for them. As soon as you go to the hyperscaler and you're paying for every one of those virtual CPU cores, whether you're using them or not. So let me show you how OpenShift virtualization allows you to overcommit CPU resources. Let's go ahead and start the demo. I've got an OpenShift cluster running version 4.13. You can see we're currently using about you know, seven virtual CPUs out of our total of 96. If we look at our bare metal hosts, let's take a look at one of them. We've got 32 CPU cores available. Those are physical cores. And on this particular node, we're using just a little over two and a half. Let's go ahead and jump over to virtualization. We look at our overview of all of our projects. Currently, I've got five virtual CPUs being used in our cluster. Let's go ahead and jump over to our templates. And I've created a project specifically for this demo. As you can see, I've got one template in this particular project. This template is going to define that we want a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 virtual machine. We want 32 virtual CPUs and 8 gigs of RAM. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we try to provision a virtual machine from this template. Let's see, it's currently stopped. And if we watch status, it immediately goes into error unschedulable because none of our worker nodes has 32 cores available to schedule to a virtual machine. So now let's go ahead and overcommit a template and see what happens. Let's go ahead and clone our existing template. And I'm just changing the name here so we have some distinction between the two. Let's go ahead and clone it. And now we're into that clone template. Let's go ahead and allow overcommitment. So if we go into our YAML file, Right here under the spec for the CPU, let's go ahead and change dedicated CPU placement to false and isolate emulator thread to false as well. And let's save that. Now, when we go back to our catalog, you'll see we have another one available. So here was our first guaranteed, and now we have overcommit. Let's click on overcommit and do a quick create of that virtual machine. What you'll see here momentarily is that the scheduler will go ahead and create that virtual machine with our 32 virtual CPUs and 8 gigs of RAM. Even though originally we didn't have availability, because we allow it to overcommit those resources, it can go ahead and schedule that VM to be created. Okay, we can see our virtual machine has been created. It says it is currently running. You can see the little console thumbnail here shows that we're at the login prompt and our metrics are starting to come up on that particular VM. 